Hello, everyone. Let's go ahead and get started today. So thanks for joining us. My name is Chris Panaris, and I'm the Marketing Manager at Exclusive Networks USA. For those that are joining us for the first time, I just want to take a couple minutes to talk about who Exclusive Networks is and uh, what we offer. We are the number one value-added cyber and cloud security distributor. We have over 62 offices worldwide, giving us the ability to handle international deals and logistics. We are Fortinet's number one distributor globally. We do pre-configuration and staging services. We have rapid turnaround time on quotes and support services. And you can always contact us and speak to a real person. We offer assistance with lead generation and closing deals. We offer marketing and technical support. We offer Fortinet and Gigamon certification training in group settings or individually. We offer a wide range of financing and leasing services to cover a variety of IT projects. And we are growing our list of vendor partners that are chosen to integrate with each other. We also offer pre and post sales support, security tools migration and jumpstart services, staging services, vulnerability testing, Fortinet NSC certification support, Gigamon Tech and Pro certification support, and cloud competency training, just to name a few. Joining us again today, we have Juan Quintero, pre-sales engineer at Exclusive Networks. Thank you, Chris. First and foremost, thank you everybody for uh, coming back and joining us for another installment of the new webinar series showcasing Gigamon as a visibility and security delivery platform and how it complements other security tools, such as Fortinet, in order to form a more complete solution through increased visibility and access to your data, so your customers can achieve an overall stronger security posture by combining Fortinet and Gigamon. All right, so the agenda for today, we're gonna take a couple of minutes to recap previous episodes, uh, and then after that, we're gonna get into the HC Serious notes. We're gonna talk about the HC 1, 2, and 3, we're also going to talk about the uh, GigaView VM a little bit more. I introduced that uh, in the last episode, um, but there is a few more things I want to say about it, and uh, we'll cover that in this episode. Uh, finally, we will talk about the GigaSmart features, which is basically the software that runs inside the uh, Gigamon uh, boxes. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so previously on GigaNet, in the past episodes, we talked about the value of Gigamon to organizations looking to protect their network infrastructure, not only against attack, but also performance-related disruption, because not everything that happens to a network or that can happen is the result of an attack. Network resiliency is just as important as network security, because at the end of the day, the network is there to facilitate communication. That's its primary goal. Sure, we wanted to make sure that you know, we are secured, but you know the main goal is facilitate communications. We discussed the advantages of Gigamon, providing real-time access to data in motion, and how it allows the user to manipulate that data in order to deliver only traffic of interest to security tools, security and performance monitoring tools. In doing so, Gigamon helps enhance the efficiency and life cycle of existing tools better return on investment and not only from a client perspective but also if you're uh, an MSSP, MSP and you have tools deployed out there you probably want to basically as they say squeeze the orange for every drop of juice so you want your tools to last as long as possible um, in service so with features like inline bypass you grant uh, you know the user the ability to add that network resiliency and also decrease the complexity of any future upgrades or changes, as well as extend you know, the life cycle of the tools. Uh, with Gigamon, you get more resilient architecture. You get a greater degree of visibility and control over your data. Network and security teams can feel a true sense of confidence in their security stack, so in their overall security solution. In the last episode specifically, we talked about the growth of the network footprint and visibility being a major issue. And then we talked about how um, you know, network administrators and, and security teams, network teams, they kind of have to make a decision and compromise on how, what, you know, what to cover 
And traditionally, they really look to the network core to start, but you know, we discussed how that's no longer viable because a lot of attacks, they start at the edges of the network and they may not even make it to the core of the network until it's too late. So if you haven't seen our, our previous episodes on uh, traffic aggregation and, and uh, the first episode, which gives you a, a, an overview of the fabric and also talks about how to tap and whatnot, uh, please make sure to check those out. They're available on our YouTube channel. Information about that will be on uh, towards the end of that presentation. All right, so let's get on to uh, the topic for today. Before we do that, I kind of want to give you guys an idea of where we are in the series. We started down here with uh, the TAP episode and the overview episode. Then we looked to the TA series. We talked about aggregation and distribution of traffic. And today we're going to talk about the HC series boxes. That's where all your GigaSmart features are applied. And the last episode, season finale of um, the season one, will be about Fabric Manager. And then after that, uh, I believe that in the first quarter of next year, we will um, come out with season two, where we're going to take a more technical approach and we're going to talk about the HC series um, more heavily about you know how to build for specific use cases, what licensing packages you need, what modules you need, etc. So the HC series enables comprehensive traffic and security intelligence at scale. These network packet brokers are the choice to enhance your security and monitoring solutions, offering up to 25 terabytes of traffic intelligence across 32 cluster nodes. The GigaView HC series enables greater network traffic visibility into data in motion, minimizes traffic overload, and provides more effective options for deploying both inline and out of band security and monitoring tools. So basically, this is where the magic happens. All right, so here we have a, another illustration. Uh, and this is kind of to drive home the point uh, with regards to the Gigamon value proposition. So here we have inline bypass, you know, take the tools from being inline, which alleviates bottlenecks created by tool network speed mismatches. I covered that in the first episode. Inline bypass also allows greater flexibility for tool maintenance and upgrade uh, and facilitates POCs for any new uh, tools that you want to adopt. Mitigate outages caused by inline tool malfunction. We also have SSL TLS decryption depicted in this, in this illustration. So essentially, if you are decrypting using Gigamon, you are decrypting once and then you are feeding all your tools decrypted traffic. So that means that you gain all that throughput of your 40 gate back. So again, decrypt once, feed to multiple tools. Also, um, I covered NetFlow and metadata generation in the first episode of the series. And I talked about the NetFlow issue uh, when you're ena enabling NetFlow at the networking appliance, number one, you get sampled NetFlow, and you know essentially NetFlow has the lowest priority when it comes to traffic, so you're really not getting the whole picture. And in addition to that, there are performance degradation issues uh, that are associated with NetFlow. So have NetFlow generated at the place where all the traffic is going through, which is Gigamon. So let's have a look at some of the uh, most common use cases. Oh, got click happy. All right, so we have eliminating contention for network data, network upgrades and uh, speed mismatches, resiliency, filtering of media and application at layer seven, managing and decrypting of traffic, centralized NetFlow, uh, the identifying of malware through metadata generation, visibility into remote sites. And this is a big one that I also talked about in the previous episode. You know, when you have a distributed footprint, sometimes it's cost prohibitive to deploy an entire security solution at each of the, uh, those remote sites. But you can definitely have an appliance, and we're gonna talk about the HC1, which lends itself well uh, for that purpose, that can be inline and can be collecting traffic and can be tunneling traffic to a centralized point where all your um, 
out of band tools are so you can have one team that is centralized that is uh, communicating and that is everybody's looking at the same thing at the same time have access to your entire network footprint you also have subscriber aware visibility visibility into private and public cloud public cloud is going to be a big topic of discussion for us in our upcoming season so um, hopefully you guys will all come back for that all right so this is the gigamon family we have hc1 2 and 3 uh, this is the hardware family um, there are some obviously virtual components uh, one of which we will talk about uh, today again we're going to talk about a little bit more about the gigaview vm all right so let's start with uh, the hc1 and this is the one that um, i mentioned in previous episodes that will soon be also the sensor for threat insight which is gigamon's ndr and again we will cover insight uh, I believe in season two. Uh, the HC1 is a uh, one RU box. The GigaSmart module is built into the middle. So that's the only part of the box that you cannot change. The two module bays on each side are um, interchangeable. So you can configure them with any combination of these three modules that are available. And when it comes to the modules, you're going to see this repeating prefix to the module nomenclatures. You have tap, bypass combo, and protected tool port. Uh, so you're going to see those prefixes in all the modules that are available for all the boxes. So here you have some of the chassis uh, specifications. 10 gigabit, 1 gigabit network ports and also RJ45 copper ports. And then the ones highlighted in this blue box are all the management ports. So these are the uh, modules. You have a copper bypass module, a copper connections. You have a protected uh, module, which has 12 connections. Uh, if you are equipped in the box with two of these, you essentially will have 24 10 gigabit ports. And then finally we have the bypass combo module. And you're going to see guys that um, for all the boxes, you're essentially going to have the same types of modules. Um, as the boxes get bigger, they are designed to uh, handle uh, traffic at faster speeds clearly so you're gonna um, just see you know ports that can handle uh, not just 10 gigabits but 25 40 and 100. all right so this is the hc2 which is a 2ru box uh, for most of the boxes there's really not much to see in the rear end uh, other than just power supplies and fans, but with the HC2, there is a GigaSmart rear module. So if you have a configuration in the front that uh, you know you can't put a GigaSmart box because you're using those modules for something else, then you can put the GigaSmart module in the in the rear. And the rear the GigaSmart module is what gives you the ability to leverage all the GigaSmart functionality, which is listed down here. And uh, I guess I'm going to go ahead and list that once. We have masking, slicing, tunnel decapsulation, VLAN tag insertion, deduplication, header stripping, APF, NetFlow generation, uh, GTP stateful filtering, flow sampling. You have the uh, management ports here on the left, and the control card uh, is accessible through the rear. By the way, it is important that for new purchases, you make sure that you're getting control card version 2. You're going to see that listed in some of these slides. Um, you know, more than likely you're going to get that, but, you know, make sure that you ask to be safe. So in addition to the rear module, we have uh, 12 more that are available for the HC2 series node. Uh, basically, again, same prefix, PRT, TAP, and BPS. And then after that, you have HC0. 
So first we have the uh, protected uh, ports, or two ports, I'm sorry. And here we have the X24, Q6, and C02, or Q06 and C02. And X stands for 10, Q stands for 40, C stands for 100. You have your tap modules down here. Uh, again, you have the first two are very similar. The only difference is this measurement right here on the fiber. And then this blue one is used for single mode fiber. And then of course you have a copper one. Uh, bypass modules. And again, from left to right, you go from slowest to fastest. You know, this last one here um, has 40 gigabit bypass combo module. And then there is a front-facing GigaSmart module card. Finally, we have the HC3. This is the big boy. You have all your management interfaces down here and four modular uh, slots on top of that. And you know nothing to see in the rear on this one. So there will be no rear GigaSmart uh, card. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven modules. Uh, if you notice, there is one kind of prefix that is not present here, and that is the tap. So with the previous two boxes, if your footprint is, um, if, if it's not a distributed footprint, so your entire deployment is within, you know, close proximity, so you have a lot of compute, a lot of traffic, but the footprint is condensed, then you, your entire deployment could be an HC box. You know, because they're modular and you can configure them to tap, bypass, and, you know, with a bunch of tool ports and whatnot. When you're deploying an HC3, however, it is uh, assumed that you have a distributed environment where you're collecting from remote uh, locations, you're tapping, you're aggregating, and then you're feeding that to the HC3. So, hence, you don't really have uh, tap modules. These are the protective modules. You have 10, 40, and 100. And there is a bunch of different ways you can use these. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, like, for example, the C16, you have 16 100 gigabit uh, QSFP 28 ports for a maximum capacity of 1,600 gigabit. You can do breakout on these, so there's just a bunch of different configurations. Uh, you can do um, breakout into 25 gigabit ports and breakout into 10 gigabit ports. There is going to be one uh, bypass combo. And then, I'm sorry, there will be, there's three, I believe. Yeah, three. It's just that I put just one on the previous page. So three of them. And then the smart card. This is the GigaSmart card, which allows you to leverage all the GigaSmart functionality. All right, so next we have the chassis maximum capabilities. Just going to give you a few seconds to um, kind of look at that. So we have the total throughput, number of modules, number of GigaSmart modules. Keep in mind that you can equip your box with, uh, except for the HC1 where the Giga Smart Module is built into the chassis in the middle slot. But in the other ones, you can equip every slot with the Giga Smart Module. Uh, and that's why you have Giga Smart Computing Engines that are um, not one in, in these. And then uh, port speeds. So you start with uh, 10, 100 megabit all the way to 10 gigabit on the HC1, and then on the other boxes, you have 25, 40, and 100. 40 and 100 on the HC2, and 25, 40, and 100 on the HC3. All right, so just to recap, we have uh, key features and benefits. Uh, modular chassis with a number of port and media options. Uh, speeds that go from 1 gigabit or actually 100 megabit to 100 gigabit compatible with a range of optics and with 
a ton of port uh, configuration options. Additionally, you have core intelligence built into these boxes, including flow mapping, which ha talks about, or that in itself includes aggregation, filtering, load balancing, access to traffic from anywhere, uh, and other advantages such as removing issues um, associated with asymmetric routing, uh, optimizing tools, spread load uh, across multiple tool instances. And then you have the benefits of inline bypass. I'm not really going to talk about them again because I think I have uh, um, that, that horse is pretty much dead from all the beating, if you know what I mean. Configuration is not unlike the other components of the fabric. You have CLI, GigaView OS that you can log in from the box itself. The preferred method is Fabric Manager. So Fabric Manager gives you a single pane of glass for your entire uh, uh, Gigamon fabric. So that's where you're gonna have all your visualizations and also Fabric Manager will fac facilitate, uh, you know, when you are configuring your tools, the graphical user interface, it makes things a lot simpler. So some of the things that you would need to do through CLI, if you're logging into the box directly, and the, by box, I mean the HC box. You can do them using the graphical user interface in Fabric Manager. All right, so to get started, it is uh, very similar to uh, what we looked at with the TA series in the previous episode. Uh, you unpack, you rack, there is a step here that is added. You need to make sure you install the components and then after that, you make your basic connections, which should include connecting the box to Fabric Manager. There is a uh, config jumpstart script that basically allows you to pick all your basic settings. All right, so let's talk about uh, GigaView VM a little bit. So in a private uh, cloud, and when, when I talk about private cloud, I, I think about VMware because basically they're the most used technology for that. Um, you know, there are other options, but you know, everywhere I've been, it's, it's, it's always VMware. Everybody, every time I talk to somebody, it's, it's VMware. If you're doing private cloud, you're more than likely doing VMware. Uh, so in this particular setup, there is really not a, a dedicated aggregator and then a virtual uh, equivalent of the AC series. There's the GigaView VM, which aggregates traffic, basically it's an OVA in the hypervisor, just like any other VM. And it, it makes a mirror copy of all the traffic. So you're talking about inner host traffic, VM to VM. And then it tunnels that out to your visibility fabric, which usually would be a HC series uh, node. And all of that is controlled by Fabric Manager. So to control the GigaView VM, you do need Fabric Manager. And to integrate with VMware, you need vCenter. vCenter is required, okay? Uh, NSX integration is also possible. We'll see that in the next slide. Um, but you, you're not required to have NSX. There are some benefits. So you can automate traffic visibility. Uh, so it gives you a better a security for your software-defined data center. So it, it's... Um, you, you allow your teams to automate the selection and filtering and forwarding of the east-west traffic. These are all the benefits of the GigaView VM here on the left. So this is a, an illustration that I also had in the last episode, and it kind of shows how um, Fabric Manager, GigaView VM, and the Visibility Fabric work uh, and integrate with uh, VMware vCenter and NSX Manager. It's going to take a couple seconds to let you guys look at that, and we will move on. All right, so adding a node to Fabric Manager. So you installed the node, you logged into it, you ran the config, uh, jumpstart script, you gave it its first IP, and then you go to Fabric Manager, and basically all you do is, um, under physical, 
on the first step here, there's going to be a button on the right of the screen. I think I cut that off there, where you can add. And then all you really need is the address and the credentials. You hit submit, and then you get a little pop up with the status. And then after it's done, it'll be right there. And then to log into it, you just simply click on it. And then you will be in the GUI of the box itself. All right, so now that we've uh, pretty much covered the physical virtual hardware, let's talk about software. Excuse me. So GigaSmart is a broad set of intelligent applications that extend Gigamon Visibility Fabric's ability to monitor your physical, virtual, and cloud infrastructure and provide your network and security tool uh, performance. Uh, GigaSmart is divided into three areas. You have traffic intelligence, application intelligence, and subscriber intelligence. And guys, these are licenses. So when you buy your hardware, you are going to bundle that with GigaSmart licenses depending on your use case. So let's uh, kind of break that down. Traffic intelligence. So in traffic intelligence, we have SSL TLS decryption. We have deduplication. Deduplication is probably one of the least talked about, yet most important features that Gigamon offers. And you know, from what I've seen and also what I've heard from customers, is something that really no one has been able to do as good as they can. So you know, with the implications of deduplication to a network are immense. You know, think about how much storage you're going to uh, save for for um, you know, um, recorders and things like that. Uh, it's just the ability to to filter out all that duplicate traffic. Uh, you can mitigate false positive. Uh, when it comes to your tools, th those false positives that are the result of duplicate traffic. So all that, you know, it, it's it's like a domino effect. So you know, less duplicate, less false positive, faster time to uh, deal with actual um, incidents and threats and things like that. Netflow generation, uh, you know, I cover that heavily in episode one. Uh, packet slicing, data masking. Uh, source port uh, labeling, advanced load balancing, uh, tunneling, uh, packet filtering. So those are all the traffic intelligence features. Next, we have the application intelligence GigaSmart features. And uh, I hope that you guys recognize this illustration from episode one, uh, where I talked about you know visibility being the first step to uh, you know you being able to protect your network against uh, threats. So visibility is not really the end game, but it's a means to do something. And it's important because if you can't see it, how are you going to protect against it? So once you have that visibility through Gigamon by leveraging uh, Gigamon's application intelligence database, where they can map traffic to specific applications, then now you can steer that traffic in any way you want. So before it even makes it to your tools. So your tools don't even have to make the decision on whether, hey, I need to inspect this, or I don't need to inspect that, or I need to send this to that. No, that happens before the traffic gets the tool. So you're unencrypting that traffic with SSL TLS decryption, but you're also saving the tool from having to make a decision about traffic, whether it should or should not uh, be inspected. And that's illustrated here at the bottom. So if you have all this traffic coming in, but then you have this traffic down here, which is Netflix, for example, that doesn't really need to be inspected, then you know you can just bypass the tools entirely with, with those applications. If you also think that your employees should not be watching Netflix during working hours, then you can just simply drop it, and it's, it's not gonna make it past the visibility platform. So the three components, you have visualization, filtering, and metadata. And metadata, which I, I covered, I believe, in episode one. It's enrichment. So when you talk about um, NetFlow and metadata, and your metadata is your ability to enrich that, that those flows with application-specific uh, details that you can fit to your uh, feed to your SIM in order to make better correlations that usually should lead to less resources having to be used 
for a, a specific incident. So you're able to resolve incidents faster. Finally, we have uh, subscriber intelligence, GTP correlation. GTP is used to carry mobile data at the core of the mobile operator's network. GTP uses both control plane protocol and user plane protocol to carry subscriber application traffic from the subscriber device to the internet. So visibility into a subscriber's traffic requires the ability to understand the subscriber attributes and the stateful information contained in the GTP um, <clears throat> to protocols to correlate subscriber specific traffic so that monitoring tools can achieve an accurate view of the subscriber traffic to the network. So in plain English, uh, you know, there's millions of people using, uh, you know, mobile subscriber uh, infrastructure and the subscriber needs to be able to know that Juan is consuming this much data every month. So they need to identify the traffic coming from my phone associated with, with Juan and so that they can bill me accordingly every month. Uh, <clears throat> Gigamo's GTP correlation application helps carry gain access to subscriber traffic in these GTP tunnels by reliably correlating and passing all of the identified subscribers control and data sessions to the analytics and monitoring pros and or billing subsystems to ensure an accurate view of the subscriber sessions. So that's basically what that is. Uh, you have SIP and RTP correlation, which optimizes tools for monitoring of VoIP and voice over LTE traffic. And you have flow sampling. So your ability to sample traffic based on percentage of sessions, achieve meaningful network monitoring without monitoring every user's or uh, domain sessions, and selectively reduce traffic bound for monitoring and analytic tools. Okay, so let's look at licensing bundles. So before I talk about the bundles, just want to let you guys know that the licenses are available a la carte, so you could purchase them individually. Um, I'm not going to cover every single one of them because we just don't have enough time. And also the bundles I felt would be more appropriate says you're probably going to need um, the majority of the licenses that are in a bundle anyway for specific use cases. And also because there's discounts associated with bundling as is usually the case. So you have a core bundle that includes flow mapping, clustering, tunneling, slicing, masking, header stripping, uh, load balancing, tunneling, source port labeling, an ERS span termination. By the way, that stands for encapsulated remote switch port analyzer, I believe. Then you have uh, NetView bundles. So you have this one, which includes the core plus NetFlow and deduplication. And then the plus includes the previous one plus adaptive packet filtering, app filtering, and advanced flow slicing. You have two security minor bundles. This one includes the core, NetFlow, deduplication, and APF. And this one includes the previous, the one on top, application metadata filtering and SSL TLS decryption inline plus out of band. And then finally, we do have a mobile subscriber uh, bundle. They are, these are the uh, bundle nomenclatures for each of the box, the box S. All right, so I think we're nearing the end. Uh, you also should recognize this slide from the previous episode. I probably will have this slide on every uh, episode just to kind of, again, drive home that point that um, through Gigamon, you can go from the illustration on the left to hopefully the one on the right. I added actually the admin icons uh, because when you have pockets of coverage, you use you usually also have a distributed administration model, meaning that in any of those uh, branches, you have people that are in charge of monitoring that space. And usually they are in different places and they are doing things on their own. Sometimes communication between those teams is not the best. So that is not ideal. What you want is not only a, a 
broad coverage, but also a centralized team that is working together, looking at the same tools and you know making decisions while keeping constant communication between all the members. Uh, I guess before I end, I'm gonna leave you with a basketball analogy. Hope you guys are a fan of basketball. In my opinion, and you guys are welcome to disagree, Michael Jordan was the greatest player of all time. Uh, you know, ever since him and after Tim Duncan, which was my second favorite player, quit, I pretty much stopped watching, watching basketball. Um, but I think that he probably would not have won all the championships without Scottie Pippen and, you know, the rest of his team for that matter. So I don't know who Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan are in this analogy, you know, and, and the, uh, 49 gigamon analogy, I'll let you guys decide. But if you want to build a championship caliber security solution, um, I think that you can definitely do that by combining both Gigamon and Fortinet. All right, so these are the sources uh, used for the creation of this presentation. And also, please visit our website. Uh, you can get more information about our company, our services, our story, and also there are links to all the social media outlets, including YouTube, where our episodes are going to be posted. Um, we are monitoring the comment section, so if you want to leave questions there, uh, feel free to do so. Okay, uh, also if you have any questions and you want to contact us directly, our contact information is down here at the bottom. So just send us an email and we'll try to get you uh, answers as quickly as we can. So that's all I have for today, folks. Again, thank you so much for taking the time. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all in future episodes.